untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today I was taking a look at a mono white deck titled Keyword Squad, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the deck is built around the alternate win condition of Strixhaven Stadium, a 3 mana rare artifact that taps for colorless and puts a point counter on the stadium, and whenever a creature deals combat damage to us, we remove a point counter from stadium, but whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to an opponent, we put a point counter on stadium, and then if it has 10 or more point counters on it, we remove all of them and that player loses the game. So Strixhaven Stadium is a very interesting alternate win condition. I've tried building a few different decks around it, one of them a red-white tokens deck, but it didn't quite work out. Instead we're combining Stadium with Angel of Destiny, which is an alternate win condition in and of itself, but Angel of Destiny has great synergy with Stadium as we can ramp into it on turn 4 thanks to the extra mana that Stadium provides. It's a 2-6 flying double striking angel that says whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we and that player each gain that much life. So the Angel of Destiny is a great blocker, it will help us gain life, so we can stay alive long enough to leverage Strixhaven Stadium as a win condition, and then it also gains the opponent life, so we're actually keeping the opponent alive so we can actually win with Stadium as opposed to just dealing them damage and winning the game that way. And then at the beginning of our end step, if we have at least 35 or more life, then each player Angel of Destiny attacked this turn loses the game, so that can also potentially come up. And then of course double striking creatures also mean we can potentially get two point counters on the stadium for each double striking creature that connects, which is also why we're playing with Thunderous Orator, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two core wizard with Vigilance, and when Orator attacks it gains flying until end of turn if we control a creature with flying, and the same is true for first strike, double strike, death touch, indestructible, a lifelink, menace, and trample. So if we have Orator alongside our Angel of Destiny, our Orator will attack as a 2-2 with flying, vigilance, and double strike, so it can easily put two counters on the stadium all by itself. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana we've got the full play set of Soul Guide Lantern, which we can play for one mana, and then exiles a card from a graveyard, can pay one mana tap and sacrifice it to draw a card. So it's a fine cantrip that can deal with any graveyard synergies, and it's also something we can play or activate after playing Strixhaven Stadium, so we make use of that one mana right away, and it's also something we can buy back with Lures of the Dream Den, not playing it as a companion, but just for copies in the main deck, the 3-2 Legendary Cat Nightmare with Lifelink, lets us replay any permanent spell with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard during each of our turns, so it can get back our Soul Guide Lantern or any of our 2 drops, including our Thunderous Orator, as well as 2 copies of Professor of Symbology, a 2-1 creature that when it enters a battlefield lets us learn, and we've got 7 unique sideboard cards to choose from, Got environmental sciences to grab a land, reduce the memory as cheap removal, introduction to prophecy can scry to draw a card, inkling summoning makes a flying token can be useful for giving the orator flying, we've got expanded anatomy to give a creature 2 plus 1 counters and vigilance until end of turn, we've got introduction to annihilation as more removal, and mascot exhibition as something nice to ramp into with our strict save and stadium. So those are all cards that our professor can search up. And then we also have the full play set of Clarion Spirits as a 2-2 that whenever we cast our second spell each turn generates a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying, so that can also help us go white to enable the Strixhaven Stadium and more flying creatures to combine with Orator as well. Then at 3 mana, besides Stadium and Lures, we have the full play set of Crystal and Giant, another creature that's excellent alongside Orator, as a 3-3 artifact creature giant, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, choose a kind of counter at random that Crystal and Giant doesn't have on it from among Flying, First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, and plus one plus one, and then put a counter of that kind onto the Crystal and Giant so it can accumulate more keywords over time, which also synergizes nicely with the Orator. And then at 4 mana we've got the full play set of Felidar Retreat, an enchantment with Landfall that either makes a 2-2 white cat beast creature token, or we can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, and those creatures also gain Vigilance until end of turn. And then of course our Angel of Destiny, and two copies of Emeria's Call which we can play as a land or a 7 mana sorcery generating 2 4, four Angel Warrior creature tokens with flying, and non-angel creatures we control gain indestructible until our next turn. And then a mana base includes 4 copies of Fable Passage, even though we're a mono-white tech, just to combine with Felda Retreat so we can trigger Landfall twice, 2 copies of Castle Ardenvale to generate more 1-1 tokens, 
Then we've got a bunch of snow-covered plains to enable our two copies of Faceless Haven, which can turn into a 4-3 creature with Vigilance. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's pretty slow with all these fabled passages, but it still seems keepable. Ideally find a Strixhaven Stadium to combine with Angel of Destiny. Opponent Black Red, so Soul Guide Lantern could be useful at disrupting any graveyard synergies. For now we'll play the Orator and then maybe play the Lantern next turn and draw a card with it. It's gonna be a Cathartic Reunion, discarding Burning Rune Demon and Unbreakable Bonds, our opponent on a Reanimator deck, so they're gonna be pretty sad when they see Soul Guide Lantern here. And Exiles the Demon. Can hang on to Fabled Passage just for now. And then I'm not sure yet if we want to draw a card with a Lantern or keep it around to potentially exile the opponent's graveyard. Probably hang on to it for now and prevent any graveyard shenanigans. So we'll get in for two. And next turn we can play Angel of Destiny. Now if we draw Felidar Retreat, we could potentially play it and play Fabled Passage to trigger Landfall twice. Thrill just discarding a land here. So our opponent might be hard casting their creatures now instead of trying to reanimate anything. Seize the spoils, discarding Draconic Intervention, okay. So that could be a reason to exile their graveyard now. Before they get a chance to exile anything and wipe the board. Although the most they can deal right now is 5 damage. So I'm still fine probably untapping and playing my Angel. So opponent gains 4, but we gain 4 as well. And we're getting closer to 35 life. And Angel of Destiny does stack, so if we play a second one, we can potentially gain double the amount of life. So if our opponent doesn't have something good here, they could be staring down lethal. They could potentially hard cast the demon thanks to that treasure token. But Soul Guide Lantern can be activated in response to any reanimation effect, not that there's any creatures to reanimate. It's gonna be Draconic Intervention for two, just killing the Orator. That's fine. And time for Angel and number two. Attack. And we're gonna gain 8 here, so not quite at 35, but we're getting close. So now even if they play one large blocker that can kill Angel, we can still win. And Velomachus, okay. Do I want to do anything in response? Don't think so. Let them attack, see what they cast for free. And yeah, unless they find a removal spell for Angel, we should be able to attack for the win. I guess Draconic Intervention can keep them alive. It doesn't deal damage to Velomachus, and now I cannot block Otherwise, uh, we lose our Angel, and now we might not have enough for lethal on the way back. Although, never mind, we can still gain 8 here, which is enough to win the game. Plus, Professor of Symbology could also learn to get a removal spell for Velomachus, but yeah, this is still enough. Since we get to gain 8, up to 35. And uh, yeah, that's enough for Angel to win the game here. 
All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Probably need to get one Fabled Passage out of the way and then save the other one for further retreats. Turn to looking at Thunder's Orator. Turn three, Crystalline Giants. Opponent's blue-black snow, so maybe a more controlling deck. So hitting Hexproof on Crystalline Giant could be important. Got Flying instead. Lantern does enable two spells for Clarion Spirit, potentially. So I'm going to think about all the sweepers our opponent could potentially cast. But for now, we'll move to combat. And hit for five. Now we'll play Spirit and then Lantern makes a Spirit token. If the Extinction Event on Even, we get to keep our Crystalline Giant at least. That's going to be a Behold the Multiverse end of turn. We'll draw a card with a Lantern. And then next turn we can resolve a Felda Retreat if our opponent casts a Sweeper here. And we wouldn't mind drawing a land. Right, Soul Shatter deals with Crystalline Giant. So they might be setting up an Extinction Event for next turn, maybe? Nope, just gonna be a Lash of Malice. Alright, so at least we don't need to worry too much about a Sweeper. And yeah, land would be pretty nice here, allowing us to play Retreat and enable Landfall. And Faceless Haven, one of the better lands to get. Make another token. Hit for three. So we're on the board. And we've got a few different angles of attack with the Retreat and the Faceless Haven now too. So a Sweeper is not necessarily enough to beat us. Sacrifice Lantern draw card. And there's Stadium. So we could turn on Faceless Haven and then play a land to put a plus one counter on the team, attack with all. Opponent might have removal for one creature at least. And depending on which one, I could still play an Orator's second main phase. Could also play Stadium, play Orator, and then play my land. Yeah, I kind of like that more. Protect the Faceless Haven from removal. And get a plus one counter on the entire team, including the freshly cast Orator. From earlier, we suspect the opponent doesn't have any sweepers in hand. And they're probably going to be forced to cast spot removal right now to prevent taking too much damage. And if they do, we can still rely on Faceless Haven to get us across the finish line. So we'll see. Stadium also pretty good against a control deck that doesn't attack our life total as we can slowly build up our point counters. We do eventually need to deal damage with a creature, since you can't win the game unless you do. Into the Royal with Kicker, bounces our token, point falls to five. Three points to Gryffindor. 
And yeah, they're within range of Haven. Especially with a land for an extra plus one counter. Six mana. And a Blood on the Snow. Nothing to get back. Another Felidar Retreat to draw. Alright, so land would have won us the game. A retreat is not a land. But yeah, we'll attack. And thanks to Vigilance we can still play a second retreat. And now every top deck, whether it's a land or a non-land, is going to be good for us. Opponent has to keep up an answer for this Faceless Haven. So it's going to be a tough battle. And there's a land. So I don't know if I want to attack with Haven here and have the opponent use a removal spell. Kind of like just playing a land, making two tokens and passing. And then if our opponent taps out for another Blood on the Snow, they're dead to the Haven. So I don't want to expose it to removal. Make sure to end of turn, use Stadium to get another point counter. Although at this point, if our opponent doesn't gain any life, it's probably not going to matter. Undersea Invader, end of turn. Okay. Well, it does have Flash, so it plays well in their deck. But not quite a Torrential Gearhulk. Cram Session to gain for. Alright, so... Stadium could still be relevant. Now Invader comes into play tapped, so would not have been able to ambush Faceless Haven. Now a Pest Summoning. This definitely took a strange turn. Not gonna lie. Opponent keeps up. 5 mana, it looks like. Castle Ardenvale, another nice mana sink. So if I go full control, I could make a token and then put counters on those tokens with retreat. I think I'm better off just going wide. And then saving my token to make it end of turn in case of another sweeper. So, 2-2, two, two, make a 2-2. Two, two. And yeah, next turn we could maybe win with Stadium by attacking with everyone. Gravenlore gonna help draw a bunch of cards. Blood on the Snow by itself isn't enough for them to survive, but Blood on the Snow plus interaction might be good enough. Shadow's Verdict, on the other hand, is pretty effective. Keeps the invader in play on defense. Opponent attacks. Yeah, I guess we'll take it. Lose a point, but we can add another point end of turn and make a human token. So we'll see if they want to tap out for Pest Summoning. They do. Professor. Can that somehow win me the game here? Seems unlikely, but let's have a look. Mascot Exhibition. Probably our best play. Alternatively, I can attack with Faceless Haven. And then... Maybe still get a Mascot Exhibition. If I cast a Mascot Exhibition, they have another Blood on the Snow. What happens? Then they're not necessarily dead. Yeah, let's take the Exhibition anyway. And then we'll keep the 1-1 one, one on defense, I think. Cram Session to gain 4. But if there's no Sweeper, we could win with Stadium next turn. 
Sciences for more life gain. A Lash kills a 3 2. Another Lash on the Inkling. So no shortage of answers here. Invader attacks. Now I'm probably fine jumping with my human, just to preserve my point counters. Don't really feel like double blocking. And Fabled Passage, a huge draw as well with double Felda Retreat. So... What's my play here? Animate Faceless Haven, play Fabled Passage, and take it from there. So, I think I just put a plus one counter on the team, which will also give Vigilance. Make a token. And then I can still activate Castle Ardenvale and Fabled Passage end of turn. They're already forced to double jump here. Cause most chargers fine. Because we're threatening to win the game with Strixhaven Stadium here. Okay. So if I fetch now, I could save my Faceless Haven. Which is probably worth it, even though we run into a sweeper potentially. Yeah, I guess making two tokens end of turn is still better than saving my haven. So we'll let damage happen. Go up to eight counters on stadium. And then end of turn I can go up to nine. Fetch, make two more Feller tokens, use a castle to make another human. So we should be able to beat a sweeper pretty easily here. Another Gravenlore to go digging for answers. But if they're not dying to damage, they're certainly dying to the stadium. Opponent only happy with one card. And of turn will fetch. Make two tokens, and hopefully we can win with Stadium instead of damage. Although I'm kind of afraid that uh, we're going to win with damage first. Up to nine counters on Stadium. Alright. So if I want to win with Stadium... I can't attack with too many creatures. Let's say I attack with a team. They block the 5-5, kill the 3-3. They might be dead, so I might have to keep one creature back. Tapping Stadium to get up to 10 counters is not enough. Soul Shatter kills that. Alright, I think we got there. Just to show that you don't win with 10 counters without dealing damage first. And there we go. Alternate win condition achieved. Albeit against a bit of a strange blue-black control deck, but outside of the Undersea Invader, their deck looked pretty decent. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Hopefully find an Angel of Destiny. I think we'll get this uh, Fable Passage out of the way. And then, for now, turn to Orator, into maybe Stadium. And then Stadium also gets synergy with Retreat, as we'll be able to play Retreat before playing our land. Opponent fetches a forest. And green-white. And a Wildwood Scourge, so plus one counter synergy deck. can hit for two. And then end of turn we can still tap our stadium to get an extra point counter. 
Sometimes it's better to wait until end of turn in case the opponent removes all the counters from Stadium by attacking, and then we can get an extra counter at the end of their turn. Probably not going to matter in this case. So the Scourge is going to get very large. Can eventually start chump blocking it maybe, or going wide enough to win with Stadium. For now, Luminarch Aspirants probably going to put a counter on itself. Or on the Swarm Shambler. So we've got a 3-3 Scourge. Can already attack past Orator. And things are not looking good. Crystalline Giants maybe to the rescue. So I can play Giant plus another Orator, or I can play Retreat, trigger Landfall. Unclear what I should choose with the Retreat. Probably make a token. And then hope to draw lands next turn so I can go Retreat into another Orator. Or I can hope that the Giant gives us some good keywords in the meantime. I think we'll go with the more mana efficient play. First strike, not the worst keyword. So Orator can attack unopposed, although I would be fine trading it for the Aspirant. So we'll see what additional plus one counter synergies our opponent can bring to the table. Fledgling can get a counter with Landfall, and a Fabled Passage gonna enable it twice. Yeah, and that Hydra is getting mighty large. And another Wildwood Scourge. Alright, at least the Fledgling won't have flying on defense. So it could maybe still fly over if the Giants gets a flying counter or if we draw something that flies. For now, it takes six. Soul Guide Lantern. We could cycle. But I'm probably better off saving it and getting a retreat in play. And then hope that Crystalline Giant delivers Death Touch. Death Touch isn't bad alongside First Strike. Probably keep this one on defense, and then the Orators can attack with Death Touch and First Strike. So they can attack unopposed, and then the Crystalline Giant's a great blocker for the Wildwood Scourge. So we got pretty lucky with our first two keywords here. Up to five counters on the Stadium. Now a removal spell on the Crystalline Giant is probably going to be game over. So it's a pretty delicate situation, as her opponent plays another Fledgling. And a Stone Coil Serpent for two. So the Hydras grow. But no attack. A land is good. So I can play retreats. Play lands. And then I'm thinking one counter and one token. So we want to get the counter first, so we get the counter on the token. And then, yeah, we'll see what the giant delivers. Hexproof is good. So these can keep attacking. First strike and death touch. I might as well sacrifice a lantern right away. Now the Fledglings could still potentially fly over and deal a lot of damage next turn. So that's a concern. But our opponent also can't take the damage forever here. Up to nine counters on the stadium, so we're just one counter away from potentially winning the game with it. 
another orator coming up. So we might see an all-out attack. Can jump with our token. Giant is a profitable blocker. So it's gonna be close. Might end up having to jump with an orator as well. All right, there we go. Can block here, jump here, and then taking eight in the air. So I have to block both three threes here. And then I'm taking nine. Yeah. And then I lose three counters on Stadium. But next turn I can potentially add a few more. Allure us to draw. Okay. Opponent's at two, so if we get lucky with Crystal and Giants, the game is over. For now, I can play Lurus, replay an Orator, or replay Lantern to maybe draw into a land for retreat, which seems better than an extra Orator. So we'll start by playing Lurus. I guess I'll tap Stadium, doesn't matter. Play Lantern. And then... Uh, yeah, what happens if I attack? Our opponent will be forced to jump. Let's say they don't draw land for Fledgling. And they attack with everyone. I can block, jump. Yeah, I think I gotta... Draw here. An extra Orator is not gonna win me the game on defense if we don't get lucky. And a lantern's also not gonna do it now. All right, flying. Lifelink, does lifelink keep me alive? Probably not. We needed menace or flying there. So yeah. Another lantern. Pass a turn, but our opponent can turn all their creatures sideways. And that will be game, and a land would have Losses game regardless. Alright, so very close game. Got very lucky with the initial counters on Crystal and Giant. Just needed Menace or Flying here to end the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. No turn two play, sadly, but. Double Crystal and Giant could do some work. Get this Fabled Passage out of the way. Opponent on Black Green. And we'll kick things off with a Crystal and Giant, I think. Blind Blade, so it might be a Death Touch Synergy deck. So getting Hexproof and First Strike are probably the two more important keywords on the Crystal and Giant. Good Death Touch ourselves. And there's Finn to start poisoning us to death. I'll still take the two poison for now. Right, there's a two drop, so we can stadium into Orator. And then Orator I'm happy to trade since we can buy it back with Lurus. Crystal and Giant gains menace. I'm not planning to block with it, so I think I should attack. If it ever questing beast, I might regret the Crystal and Giant attack. It's gonna be a rabbit bite on Orator instead, so we gain four more poison. That's fine. So 
So time for Lurus plus Orator. Could also Lurus plus Crystal and Giants. Um, but I feel like we want to get multiple bodies out there that we're happy to block or trade with. And then by keeping the stadium untapped, I can potentially get an extra point counter end of turn that we would otherwise lose. Let's see what the giant gets here. Trample. All right, we'll keep it back now. There's a questing beast, so Crystal and Giant probably has to block there. Opponent sends a team. Trade for the Blind Blade, keep Lurus. And then end of turn I can still tap my stadium to get a point counter. Backup Lurus is good to have. So it's going to be Crystal and Giant plus Orator. Probably keep Fable Passage in hand in case we draw Fell at our retreats. Crystal and Giant gets first strike. Very useful. I think I still keep Lurus back because if they kill my Giant, I don't want to be chumping with Orator. And we have a backup Lurus so that can trade. Another questing beast could be bad. Although we could always double block it, I suppose. Put on passes. Alright, can cast a Mirios Call. So our opponents ran out of uh, action. Maybe another Finn in hand that they can't really put to use. Crystal and Giant flies. Allurus can attack. Do I attack with anything else? Sure. I guess we'll attack with the team here. Orator is Vigilance and we have two Angels back. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, especially if we can find a stadium. We've got the Orator and the Angel to go with it. Get this tapped Fable Passage out of the way. Opponent with Zerda, the Dawn Waker as companion. So, interested to see what that means. For now, probably play the Orator first, as Lurus can potentially give it a lifelink next turn. Opponent might be holding a shock to take it out, but that's a shock that's not killing Lurus Frostbite instead. Could also wait until we can play Lurus and get something back out of the graveyard. But if they don't kill Lurus, next turn I could replay Orator after playing the Spirit to make a 1-1. So we'll go with the higher upside play. Opponent's gonna opt in response. Shock kills Lurus. They didn't do it end of turn, so they must have drawn that for the turn. Another Lurus. Alright, now we will wait and uh, I can either play Clarion Spirit or Animate Haven. Probably play the Spirits and then next turn going Lurus into Replay Orator will get us a Spirit token as well. So our opponent appears to be a Blue Red Spells deck. Now seize the spoils, discarding another copy. 
no shortage of interaction. Blitz exiles the spirits, so won't be able to get that back with Lurus. Alright, interesting twist. I think I do want to get immediate value from Lurus. So we'll give up some Clarion Spirit value. Play Lurus, replay Orator. Expressive iteration. Pretty nice here once they've hit a few line drops. So Ags also land that they can play right away. Shock once again deals with Lurus. And I think it's time for Angel. Could also play the Clarion Spirit and Lantern to make a 1 1, but we'll save that for next turn. And yeah, all we're missing is Strixhaven Stadium. I've got our double striking, life gaining creatures out there, making sure the opponent doesn't die. Ooh, dual strike. Copies experimental overload. That's pretty strong. Gets back Blitz, which can easily take care of our Angel next turn. And gets back iteration. Well, our opponent might just be dead here. Second Angel of Destiny means a lot of life gain. And yeah, we're going to be above 35. By quite some margin, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a perfect opening hand. Turn 2 Orator, turn 3 Stadium, hopefully turn 4 Angel of Destiny. So this is the best way to enable our Strixhaven Stadium. And there's the land we need, so everything is in place. Opponent with an Indatha Triome. Turn 2 Hollow Blade, that's fine. Play Stadium. Don't really want to trade here. Opponent can just discard a card to trade for the Orator. But next turn it'll fly. And then end of turn I can use Stadium to at least get one counter on it. Cram Session gonna discard Silver Smote Ghoul. That's a cool combo. We'll come back end of turn. Hollow Blade hits for three. One, I'm gonna discard another Silver Smote Ghoul. So we're gonna get two of those back end of turn. Alright, so opponent with a very nice start as well. Let's see if our Angel of Destiny can uh, save us. Now we're also gaining the opponent life. Although. The ghoul only gets back during the opponent's turn. So it's not like they can get those back in our end of turn. Alright. Up to four counters. Next turn we can add another angel to the board. And uh, seems relatively safe to block a ghoul. Take six, lose two point counters. And there's an eye twitch that can jump. Could maybe learn for an answer for stadium, which would be unfortunate. Instead, our opponent discards yet another silver smoke ghoul. So they drew three of those in the top 13 cards. Yeah, we'll play another Angel. They do stack, so it'll gain us even more life back. And another good blocker for the Silver Smote Ghoul.
Bone and chumps. Sadly, they get containment breach, so that's gonna destroy the stadium. So now we're on the Angel of Destiny plan. Could have tried to play Crystal and Giant to maybe bait out containment breach, but. This seems reasonable too. Alright, so stadium down. So now the goal is to get to 35 or more life. And yeah, opponent concedes. They don't have any great attack with the Silver Smote Ghoul. And the Angels are quickly going to get us there. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Might get to see Stadium in action. Pretty good alongside Clarion Spirits and Felidar Retreat. Although for now... Could give the edge to Orator. What's my plan here? Next turn Stadium, turn 4, I could play Retreat. Then play a land, or I could double spell to trigger Clarion Spirit. Um, I'll play the Orator. Orator will be able to get flying if we make a flying token with the Spirit on turn 4. Opponent with a Rally the Ranks, naming Spirit, so Spirit Tribal. Yeah, don't mind playing Stadium here. We'll get two point counters right away. End of turn, make sure to tap it just to get a point counter. War Singer's a good one though. 4-4. Four, four. So I have to decide if we want to play Retreat, play Land. But I think Spirits into Professor of Symbology is a bit better here. And then what do we want to learn? Don't mind getting a removal spell. Annihilation or reduce to memory, although it makes a spirit token, so it's a bit awkward with Rally the Ranks. So I'm kind of liking Annihilation, could also go for Mascot Exhibition. With the idea that next turn we can play Retreats, trigger Landfall, and then we're just one land away from casting the Exhibition. Yeah, sure. And this will gain flying once it attacks. Up to four point counters. So we can take a hit from the War Singer. Lose a point counter. Alright, point's got Clarion Spirits into another rally, so it'll be able to make a 3-3 three, three Spirit Token, so that's pretty big. So if I play Stadium, I wouldn't be able to play Retreat and play Land afterwards. So I think it's going to be Retreat, play Land, but then I might be unable to play Exhibition next turn. How important is triggering Retreat this turn? Putting a plus one counter on the entire team still doesn't really get me past the 3-3 three, three Spirit Token. But how good is Mask Called Exhibition going to be next turn? I guess Double Spelling also triggers Clarion Spirit. Alright, we'll uh, play Stadium into Retreat then and miss out on a Landfall trigger. But yeah, that was a good turn for the opponents. Putting 7 Power and Toughness in play and boosting up the War Singer at the same time. And there's Hoffrey. Giving Spirits another plus one bonus. And uh, yeah, we're in trouble. If I trade for the War Singer, it's gonna come right back. And I'm taking 15 right now. Gonna lose three point counters. Not necessarily close to getting the alternate win here. And no sense in chum blocking against Trample. Our own Clarion Spirits, not going to be enough. 
can play exhibition, but yeah, still gonna be dead to all the tramplers. If I tank with everyone, they can still block two on the ground. So most I can do is uh, three point counters on stadium before dying. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, especially if we can find Angel of Destiny to go with our Strixhaven Stadium. But turn to Orator into a Crystalline Giant's also pretty nice. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one island. And a Secret Keeper, so up against a mill deck. And there's Angel of Destiny, so we've got a great start if we can find our land for a Ruin Crab. And yeah, the mill deck's not going to be very good at pressuring our life total to remove counters from Stadium. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Can add a point end of turn. Of course, they could smill us to death before we get to 10 counters pretty easily. Especially if I don't hit my land drop next turn. So end of turn, get a point. And there's a land. Let's hope this resolves. It does. So two more points. Thanks to double strike. And the other opponent might need a Bounce Spell to get rid of Stadium here. Bounce Spells in general also effective against our expensive Angel. We'll land 4, mills us for 6. So we're about halfway our library. Opponent lots us on tap, so this might be a counter spell they're keeping up. Could also be an end of turn into the story to draw 4. So what's my play? I could play a second stadium plus Crystal and Giant. That way we are diversifying the stadiums in case of a bounce spell. Or I could just play another Angel of Destiny pre-combat in case they bounce the original one, although that's worse against the counter spell since we're not double spelling. So I think I like stadium plus giants. Although Bounce Spell on Angel means I wouldn't be able to replay it this turn. But we are putting more creatures in play for the following turn. And then I'm fine if they cast her into the story here. Right, that resolves. I think I should play the Giant now to maybe give the Orator an extra keyword. And of course a Giant Wants to get the keyword as well, gets hexproof, not bad. Get to attack. And it's gonna be a divine by zero bouncing the angel. Alright, so no additional point counters this turn. Annihilation can get rid of my stadium, but that's why we have a backup. And we've got a backup angel as well, so we'll see. Field of Ruin can destroy my Faceless Haven and enable Landfall on the Ruin Crab once again. So having a basic land would have been better. Put on Dos Annihilates Stadium. Find a backup. Alright, let's uh, play the Angel. Don't have enough mana for Stadium plus Angel, do we? I guess we do, so that's even better. Get flying. All right, so three more points. And I guess we're also close to just winning with Angel of Destiny's alternate win condition. So attacking from a lot of different angles. Although we're pretty close to getting milled out with double rune crab in play. 
So if they don't bounce anything that's in play, we could win with both Stadium and Angel of Destiny next turn. Kick off on the emails for eight. So we're down to 13 cards. So land plus Field of Rune activation would mill for 12. So if they also have an extra Secret Keeper, we're dead. I can fail to find with the Field of Rune activation to keep an extra card in my library. Otherwise they would mill us out. Alright, let's hope they don't have any mill left in hand, but I'm kind of afraid they do. Opponent attacks. Can block, not that it matters. And yeah, it's angel time. GG's, attack with all. And we've got both alternate win conditions with Angel and Strixhaven Stadium. And it's going to be Stadium that wins the game first. Sweet. All right. The perfect game here. So we got to see the deck in action. Of course, never easy to win with alternate win conditions, especially ones as convoluted as Strixhaven Stadium. As I've said in the introduction, I've tried a few different builds, including red-white tokens. So yeah, this video took a lot of effort, so leaving a like down below will let me know that you appreciate it. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.